so uh, last week we had a, a dry, a very, very dry bones try to come up and teach us, you know, and uh, I want to basically expound some, on some of that. Uh, I wasn't hearing all of what he was saying, but I, you know, glimpsed in some of the stuff he was saying. He was saying like, uh, uncovered, uh, Noah uncovered the nakedness, he, uh, he said a ham, and uncovered the nakedness of Noah, but scripturally, and, uh, Reality said he saw the nakedness of Noah, but uh, I'm not I'm not sure exactly what I think he said that uh, he saw was the Arab I believe he said or, or whatever he said. I'm just basically going to go into you know these uh, these wines you know which you have of uh, plenty you know because ba Babylon is full of wines you know you can take wine you you mix you can make a thousands of millions of wines that's why how these why these religions and false philosophy are equated to wine. You can create, you can just create, take this wine, mix it with that wine, you got a whole new wine, you know? So this uh, basically is a uh, talk, we're gonna basically talk about, you know, the so-called false philosophies. And uh, I wanna go in after, uh, can you get Genesis chapter 10? Where it talks about Japheth. Cause Japheth is not the so-called white man. If, if Japheth is the so-called white man, we got a long, ad, we got a, a a few captivities go through before we, you know, we get established. Yeah. This is uh, Genesis 10 and 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, and Ham. So like Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magar, and Madai, and Javin, and Tubal, and Meshach, and uh, Ty Tyrus, and the, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Rip Riphoth, and Togermah, and the sons of Javin, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanum. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue. Now scripture says these are the isles of the Gentiles. So now, isles, that verse basically means islands. Can you uh, read that definition of Polynesian? Okay. Because uh, Japheth is, is equated with, you know, uh, by, the isles of the, uh, by the isles of the sea. This is an um, etymology of Polynesia. It's wicked, 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 It says from ancient Greece, from ancient Greek, which they are actually Greeks, according to the Moon Handbook, Tahiti, the term Polynesia was coined by Charles D. Brasses in 1756 and applied to all the Pacific Islands. Oh, this is, oh, it's, oh, okay, kind of. This is uh, from ancient Greek, polis, many. So, uh, poly uh, means many. Go ahead. Uh, Niso, Nesos, island. So, many islands. So, that's what the or Polynesians mean, many islands. And over here, you got uh, Japheth is being equated with the Isles of the Gentiles because there's plenty of islands with them. So, that's who you're... Uh, uh, your uh, so-called Japhites are. You also got uh, what's called an Austronesian language, or Oceanic languages, and they are uh, basically a family of languages that are shared between your Australians, your Polynesians, and your Hawaiians, which we all equate with being Japhites. So that's who your uh, Japhites are. Japhites is from the so-called white man, because they say, because uh, originally Japheth ruled in that land of, uh, of Europe. That's where they initially were. Then they got pushed out. This is why they equated them with the islands. So initially they were, you know, but then they got pushed out and the so-called white man took upon their identity. And therefore that's why they're called Japheth and uh, uh, Gog and Magog, shall I say, which Gog and Magog, uh, uh, can you get Ezekiel? Unless you have something else to get in the ground. Okay, Ezekiel 38. 
when I read these uh, titles, these uh, the, the Polynesian islands are made of of the Hawaiians, Samoans, people from Tahiti, the French Polynesian islands, the Fijians, the New Zealand, New Zealand, the Easter Island, Tonga, um, to the Cook Islands, Tavos, Nui, uh, Tulu, Tuklu, American Samoa, uh, Norfolk Islands, uh, Tamua, Wallace, and Tutana. Uh, it's a lot of them, bro. You got the New Guinea. It's two different types of New Guinea. Um, and Solomon Islands, it's, 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 and it's more, you know, because the Australians also are part of those uh, islands. Hell, even some of the Malaysians are part of them. Um, yes, go ahead. Be, and and go on, got, go on to captivity. So the Polynesians were known as the Medes in the scriptures, you know. So being that they were the Medes, they were part of a kingdom that was already uh, in a vision with Daniel had seen he saw the he saw the, the, the captivity of, of Israel from the Persians and the Medes, which was the uh, which was that uh, breastplate of silver. So uh, Japheth has already had their time and ruling, and, and, and I know it's a scripture here that say the, the Romans pushed the Japheth into the islands. Ah, uh, that was it. Genesis ten. Genesis ten. No, it was something else. Go ahead, bro. This is uh, Ezekiel 38 and 1. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and, pro and prophesy against him. And say, Thus said the Lord Power, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. So over here, over here is talking about the actual white man over here. Because they took upon the identity. Now, if you read the scriptures, you would think that Japheth actually, or your so-called Polynesians, actually are going to be world powers again. That it's it's a wrap for them. You know, most I didn't even give them a whole they had to share their kingdom. You know, <laughs> they said y'all ain't even significant enough. You know, uh where did you leave off at? Uh okay, read it to about verse four. It says, this is verse, verse 3, and say, thus saith the Lord power, behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thy armies, horses and horsemen, all them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling these swords. This is verse 7, Ezekiel 38 and 7. Be thou prepared, prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee. And be thou a guard unto them. Right, it says be a guard unto them. So that's your so-called Russians. They're basically uh, the big brothers to all these other little tiny little nations. Because at first when uh, ba Babylon would go in other countries, you know, like Afghanistan, you know, where, uh, uh, Egypt, uh, Libya, you know, they basically was able to overthrow, you know, those countries, you know, in a matter of moments. But then, uh, basically, they realized that what a Babylon was trying to do, you know, set up, you know, their own garrisons where they can actually uh, partake and, you know, take everything down little by little. So they said, be thou a guard unto the, to the smaller nations. You know, one more time. He said, be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years, Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people. Now, so this this is this is a, a read map that reads a little bit more actually. Against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, 
that shall be like a cloud to cover the land. Thou, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. So the so-called Russians, they are, you know, they're, uh, I think it's called the Warsaw Pact, I believe. They had, you know, uh, other nations gathered together with, together with them. Matter of fact, I want to look that up, make sure I've got that correct. Did you have something that you want to bring up? Oh, okay. And then, uh, uh, this is on that that I need. So I need on that. Then can you get uh, Psalms 82? Yeah. <laughs> can I grab one real fast? Because it, because the land that um uh, that Japhet originally inhabited was the, was the land of uh, Greece. cooperation and mutual assistance was a collective defense treaty signed in Warsaw among the Soviet Union, which the Soviet Union is your Russians, and seven Soviet satellite states of Central and Eastern Europe during the Cold War. The Warsaw Pact was the military complement to the Council of Mutual Economic Assistance, uh, the regional economic organization for the socialist states of Central and Eastern Europe, the Warsaw Pact was created in uh, reaction to the integration of Western Germany and NATO. So uh, NATO, the EU, you know, your seven, your, your ten horns, that was there was a reaction. So we're going to create our own legion, you know, so they were going to be a uh, war, you know, so and even today, they're still a guard to the other smaller uh, little nations. This is uh, Psalms 83 and 1. Keep now thou silence, O power, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O power. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So it's talking about the enemies of the nation of Israel, which is so-called Negroes and so-called Latinos. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So this is prophetic which will happen to us. Basically, are we over here, uh, when we are in Africa, this is when this uh, was accomplished. Go ahead. They have for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom. So it says they are confederate against thee. So they named in the, uh, the nations that are confederate against thee. They said the tabernacles of Edom. It didn't say the tabernacles of Japheth. It says the tabernacles of Edom. Read that one more time. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarines. Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assur also is joined with them. They have hoped the children of Lot, Salah. I, I didn't see Japheth anywhere in that. Nowhere did he say the, 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 the tabernacles of Japheth. You know, the, uh, the chief of Japheth. This is talking about so called uh, the, the uh, Edomites. So the Edomites were the main ones that took crafty counsel against us. They said, you know, let us cut them off. We're going to take their name. We're going to take their uh, nationality, their language. We're going to take all that from them. Japheth is not described as doing that. So that right there is a, is a cut to this whole the white man, the so-called Japheth. Uh, I just want to bring out something about uh, Alexander the Great. This is Daniel's 8 in, uh, in uh, 21. Because it, it, wasn't, it wasn't Japheth that took down it wasn't Japheth that took down the uh, the Persians and the Medes, you know? Because if I'm not mistaken, the Persian and the Medes were, were Japhetic, right? So this is, uh, 
Daniel 8 and 20, it says the ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. All right, those are the media, the, the, the land of Media and the, the land of Persia. That's where uh, Russia is today. It says, and the rough goat is the king of Grisha, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. It says, now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, for it uh, stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of out of the nation, but not it, uh, but not in his power. And the understanding of that, you can get that from. Um, can, can somebody grab Malachi one and one, just to make a quick example of how the people that in, that um, that force, because it, it tells you, it's a nice plan. It tells you that um, that that uh, they were forced into the aisles. The, the ones that forced them into the aisles were the so-called white men, and they inhabited their lands. They inhabited Greece. So it, it was the so-called white men that inhabited Greece 